morning. I'm experiencing something right now that um, I've heard other people tell me, I actually coached a few people through it, but now I'm in it. This situation where your loved one is ill, you're taking care of your loved one, and it's, it's, a, it's cancer, it's a horrible cancer. And how do you, as a caretaker, as a person who, who obviously wants to do everything possible for your loved one to heal, how do you still, what do you do with your emotions? What do you do with your feelings? What do you do with your body aches? What do you do with your own health? What do you do with the guilt that you're not important in this in this in this minute in this situation in this now and yet you are important you have to be important because you are a part of their support you are a part of your children's lives you are a part of you're important just because of you that is hard i had a really really difficult time yesterday um, and i couldn't didn't want to burden matthew even though i i did at one point i did you know break and i poured out all of my concerns and and there are some other challenges with kids you know there's so much to do so here's what I've learned and here's what I want to tell you one you got to prioritize I had to just sit down and say okay what's important right now children's stuff children's schools uh, work income that that actually we, we, we can't live without it everything else has to be secondary but at the same time the number one priority is health. Okay, I can't do any of that without my health. And so what does that mean? Physical health, emotional health, spiritual health. Um, so yesterday, I, I was just feeling like I just wanted to stay in bed, cover myself with a blanket, and ble- give in to despair. Instead, I went for a walk. I made myself go for a walk. It just so happened that I had my well checkup, uh, yearly annual well checkup. So I went to the doctor. He ran a whole bunch of tests. You know, it was it was kind of like odd, but but also very natural that here this doctor has to take care of me as well, and I have to tell him about my tiny little aches and pains that seem insignificant. Um, and then, most important thing, yesterday, and the hardest of all is. I actually, well, I sang through the day. I, I sat by the, my piano and I just sang because that's the way that I let out my emotions. And I sang a beautiful song that is a prayer. In the evening, I took my mom out to an event that I had been invited for a long time. It was the Thistle Farms, their annual um, event big event and Reba was singing and it was just so beautiful and at one point we were like well we can't go to a concert you know it's not appropriate to go out um, while we're in this situation where the next morning we're going in for scans and to see how the medicine is working it's scary we need to be home with Matthew and yet it was the right thing to do. It was exactly the place where I needed to be because, and I'm wearing the shirt today, love heals. Because yes, love heals. I was reminded that if love can heal the most horrible situations, if love can heal and restore the lives of those who have been abused, who have gone through so much, who have gone through in and out of prisons, addictions, if love can heal that, if, God, if love can heal those tremendous wounds, then love can kill him, can heal cancer too. And that's just it. Love can heal. Love heals everybody. Love heals. Love is the most powerful tool and medicine that we have. And for those of you who are, you know, who, who uh, equate love with God, and I am one of them. God is love. I've learned that. That's how I first understood God, that God is love. That's where we go for healing. So 
I hope this was helpful to you. I hope that on a day when you feel giving into despair and fear, that you can remember this, that to go to love, a love that will heal you and give you strength to then help those around you that you love. I love you. Thank you for journeying with us. Thank you.